Hi hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll be showing you the process behind my Kafka A Fly Caught in a Web speed paint. And I know it's been a month since I've posted, but it, I've just been so busy this semester with getting uni work done that I haven't actually had any time to sit down and just do a voiceover. Like this piece, this piece was made early January, like after my New Year's piece, um, and I've had the video sitting here, I've just needed to edit it and sit down and do some more filling. But yeah, now that I'm ill, I suddenly have some free time. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but um, yeah, it's been a very, very tiring week for me. But anyways. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into this video. So from here, if you saw at the start, I had already gotten my line art down. I had the base colour of Kafka's skin in, just so I could clearly see her on that layer. But how I work, like to work is start from everything in the foreground, that's furthest away first. And build up the background from there and then focus on the character so the character is in the relevant and accurate lighting I guess and it everything just flows together nicely I think I think it's quite logical to work in that way from back to front um, but yeah I was going for like a neon city lights kind of vibe with this piece. I really love the colours from my reference image here so I tried to replicate that but I felt I felt like the dynamic if you've seen any Star Rail Honkai Star Rail content the, the dynamic between Kafka and Silver Wolf is very like digital kind of cyberpunky space warriors I guess <laughs> And I wanted to capture that here, totally not because I have a bias to Silver Wolf or anything, but you know, Kafka is amazing too. Kafka is so swag. So yeah, to explain what's going on in the background, um, there's City furthest away from, from the viewer, and Kafka is kind of on this like disco dance floor rooftop um <laughs> and these there's all these monitors and tvs and they're going to be showing images relevant to kafka's character based on like her play style in, in the game and her aesthetics if you can't tell from my color palette i'm trying to stick kind of strictly to this color scheme because i want everything to just feel like it's meant to be together because I'm working in such a unconnected way I guess um, but yeah to get this glow effect from the monitor screens I'm creating a new layer and switching the option to glow dodge in the layers mode um, yeah, I do not keep my layers organised, I'll, I'll have to say now, so you're probably going to see these layers piling up and piling up. I try to go back to the correct layers, but I don't name them, so we can imagine how difficult it might get to find stuff. <laughs> for the TV monitors, um, for the first one, I kind of stuck to trying to replicate what I was seeing in the reference image but for the rest I tried to go more freehand since I had like the foundations of what I wanted it to look like down just to add some variety and not to make it like I was copying I guess um, I think I have a few different references um, in my sub view for this piece just because I could spend like hours on Pinterest 
looking for inspiration like it would it would, it's crazy i would spend more time looking at the reference probably no i'd spend more time looking for references than actually drawing sometimes which is kind of kind of insane i think but yeah now that i've done the tvs i've had this idea from the reference to add some cool cables like why have a tv without cables <laughs> anyways no like since i was going for like this trapped in a web kind of idea i felt i might as well just add some cables also i thought why not create some live wires in the front to like show Kappa's I guess chaotic side like she's not phased by these wires near her in fact she's probably enjoying seeing destruction um moving on <laughs> time to start colouring Kafka speaking of her Hoyo verse or Mihoyo and their designs are just so amazing all the time like just look at Kafka look at Kafka in my sub view and she is looking wonderful like her color scheme is so satisfying um and like that crisscross pattern in her shorts oh my gosh <laughs> I love the asymmetric boots, the glasses, oh my gosh, I need her glasses. But yeah, whilst we're colouring, I try to keep as much as I can on separate layers so that it's easier to colour those layers by clipping new layers on top of the base colours just so I can continue to add texture and rendering. On top of specific sections easier but sometimes i do mess that up like i'll think i'm drawing on a new layer and i really am not so everything becomes a bit merged which makes it a struggle for later but it's nothing i can't cope with <laughs> divide conquer overcome oh yeah another thing with these glorious character designs is that they may look so simple from just looking at them right because they're so beautiful in game when you see their models and their, their character art and then when you're actually drawing them you're like oh dang there is so much detail so many tiny details you want to capture and it gets really really difficult like i have to zoom in so much and try to figure out where all of these colours are going. To be honest, this isn't my most cleanest lineup. I think I was going through that phase where I didn't really want to do properly clean lineup. And that that was probably my biggest struggle of this piece. It's like figuring out where I intended for the colours to go. Especially in her shirt where the lines are so sketchy. But we thrive we get past it and now we move on from the base colors to adding shadow and highlights and i wanted to go with like this painterly texture i guess so i'd create new layers on top of my line art and fill out the rest from there i found this really handy i think it was in like a japanese watercolor set but it's a really thin kind of fluffy brush and it gives the illusion of like a satin texture or I'm using it for hair right now because the strands are so thin and it, it just creates really nice shadows and highlights depending on what colour you use I think so that was handy um, I also really like to add stray hair sometimes with this other thin pen brush I got from the Clip Studio Paint Assets store. It's really useful to find stuff on there. I think I went on there like twice when I first installed this software and I've never had to go back again because I loved the brushes I downloaded 
<laughs> right at the beginning so much. But a lot of my other tools I use are mainly the standard G Pen that come with the software. Anyways, G Pen and the brown brush, I think it's called. Since I didn't want to overcomplicate this piece any more than it it already was, like there's a lot going on in here. I tried to keep the shading for the skin and mainly everything to do with Kafka quite toned down, soft, simple. Um, but yeah, I love adding <laughs> pink just to give the skin some some colour, you know, some life, and blending it down. This one's this this specific blender is called the Cookie Blender. Also downloaded from the Asset Store. Asset Store. All of these were free, by the way. Clip Studio's library of resources is so brilliant, especially for the free stuff. Like, of course, you have to pay for some, but the the free options they aren't bad. They're actually kind of just as good, I think. You just have to find the right one. But yeah, I continue to shade. Using the multiply tool at this stage is really handy and just like switching opacities. When I wanted to add texture to the skin, I'd use this oil paint brush. It, I think I've used it mainly for dark shadows here. If you can tell there's like a a different texture to this move blended out version of the skin in some areas on like the nose and the lip moving on to the shirt and the, the jacket i have to figure out where all this lighting is where it's where it's coming from how the shadows react to that lighting making sure everything blends nicely and nothing stands out too much unless i want it to also, I don't strictly stick to this particular line art because I am going for like a painted over kind of vibe. It's just more like a guideline in this case. To be honest, I'm not the best at rendering clothes still. I think I need to spend some more time just looking at clothes references and trying to replicate how I would colour it in my style because I really struggle <laughs> when it comes to clothing. Like I love doing hair, the face, eyes, but clothing, that's that's a sticky, a sticky situation. Um but yeah, I tried my best here. I think in in the end it looks decent. But I would love to <laughs> really hammer down on my rendering for clothing at some point. At this point I was really trying to fill in any gaps and clear up any confusion from my sketchy lines before, just so everything looked nice and smooth, not as rough by the, the finished thing. I think we get the idea from here. What? kind of process I'm going through. I paint over the line art in the base colour, filling in any gaps. I go over, usually starting with shadows in a dark colour, to clear up my lines, edges, and go in with the lightest colour to add highlights to give the illusion of a 3D look. So, now I get to waffle a bit about What's going on in the world of this year? <laughs> so, in the last video I spoke about monthly goals and I said last month I was drawing Honkai Star Rail characters focusing on interesting perspectives and capturing expression. And yeah, that was fun. I thought that was over because this month I decided to join the Fowl's Instagram art challenge for this month, Bonguary, where every week or every day you draw a different mushroom or an art piece inspired by that mushroom. And I was doing super well at the start, but um, 
it all fell to pop when <laughs> I got super busy with my uni project so I had to cut down on that and then it was announced that Honkai Star Rail Beta was coming out and there were opportunities to join and I thought I'd get in but no <laughs> I'm not in and to cope with the fact that I'm not in beta I have just been watching other streamers like Atsu <laughs> play the game whilst I suffer and that I'm kidding but yeah it made me want to draw more of the new characters that re were revealed some more so I guess I am kind of stuck between participating in Fungary and drawing Honkai Star Wars characters that I really love and it's stressing me out because I can't play the game until official release which is kind of months away like I know it's close and I'm super happy but also I want to play it now and I'm obsessed with this idea that I want to play it now <laughs> but yeah that's me back to the art tips on making stuff shiny is just make sure your shadows are extremely dark and then have super bright highlights that stand out and there you go bada bing bada boom it's done you have a shiny gold piece on your <laughs> on your drawing keep the shape super simple as well i feel like that looks really nice from far away um but yeah this is just a matter of me going in to every small detail, adding the right lighting, right texture, right colours, so it all looks natural. Sticking as closely to the reference image of Kafka as possible because I really want her to be recognisable. Wow, look at that juicy highlight. Ain't that beautiful? Here I'm just adding more highlights and shadows. I switch between the soft airbrush to create a nice texture or the noise airbrush. Sometimes if I want it more dissolved and speckled. At points I'm trying to add some really nice rim lighting that reflects the colours around her. I think it, it just livens up the piece. even. Even if it's a small detail, it just it adds more character, I think. Oh, this technique I used to make her darker is I duplicated the base colour of her skin, made it this purplish grey colour, set the layer to multiply and put it on top of everything I've just coloured. And then I erased the darker tones with the eraser tool. With the eraser tool, sorry my voice. And yeah that's how I add stark lighting and now she looks like she suits the the darker atmosphere which is quite a cool effect and now you'll see I've added a new glow layer outside of everything in my Kafka folder so that the glow actually works with Kafka's colours and the background colours because sometimes the glow tool doesn't like being in a folder for it to work properly but anyways um it's not a glow tool I'm using the airbrush why am I calling it a glow tool it's the glow layer mode with the airbrush tool <laughs> I go around adding the colours from the background, the teal from the background, like the city, and from the monitors as well, the purples, the pinks, and the live wires. So many colours to consider here. I wanted it to, I did want it to have like this multicolour kind of cool neon effect, so yeah, I can't complain. <laughs> I did have to be careful here, like I wanted her to stand out from the background but I didn't want to go overboard with the glow effect. Maybe I should have toned it down a bit but in the end she looked fab I think. So yeah, all's well that ends well. <laughs> Whenever I felt that my highlights were too much I'd always use the soft eraser and just 
lightly brush over it just to tone it down a bit and I think that worked well enough in most cases but yeah after this I go in and add a few more details just to really sell the piece you know get everything together with, with a few special effects some text like I haven't written anything in the monsters yet and here's the time lapse from sketch to finish yes I did do that thing where I forgot to start recording the time lapse process of my piece but I did luckily remember just before I started the lineup <laughs> but thanks guys for sticking through this video give it a like give me some feedback and stay happy and healthy <laughs> I do have content planned it's just when when do I get the time to sit down and do a voiceover like these you know here's the final reveal bye bye